I, well, I can't wait. I mean, for those of you who 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 have not been watching Ozark, uh, Jessica Francis Dukes joined the third season. She also, along with uh, Lisa Emery, who is obviously returning, uh, this show is one of the best shows that you can watch, that you can see. And not only that, the the female characters in this show are just crushing it. And Jessica plays an FBI agent who is basically, like all the other characters, finding themselves drawn deeper and deeper into hell. And so I am so honored to speak with her because, man, what an ensemble cast. What a great bunch of actors. What a great bunch of characters and writing everything. So please welcome uh, Jessica Francis Dukes on to the show. It is my honor to speak with you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Uh oh, we, we're not hearing you. Let's see. There, there it is. There we Yeah, uh, now we got you. I had you on mute because I was like, I don't know if they can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I gotta tell you, you guys were killing it this year, and I think it, it's you know this was a show that I didn't watch at first. So my girlfriend watched the first season. And she's like, you've got to watch this show, and then I became obsessed. And when the third season dropped, I mean, we were like waiting. We you know we have to see it, and. I've got to ask you, first of all, talk about how you got involved with this show, and, and do you think as an actress that this show is one of the best shows for, for female, for actresses on TV? Because I can't believe the women characters in the show. They're the yeah. heart and soul of the show. Yeah, yeah. I um I was a huge fan before it even the audition even came along, so when the audition uh, popped up in my email, I was just like, oh, Oh, okay. Because <laughs> it's one of my favorite shows. And I binged it so many times. So I was just <laughs> like, was perfect. Because I think a lot of actors just binge it just because of the talent on the show, you know, um, and the writers and everything. So I was a huge super fan. Um, so then the audition came along uh, and I just, I jumped on it. But, you know, like any audition, you don't know what's going to happen. And then a month later, I got a call and I was just like, <laughs> Well, I mean... <laughs> Uh, you you uh, you're so I mean you you play this very by the book buttoned up character that is not going to do anything wrong you know you you have to make sure because that you're following up these people that bent the law so you you're on, you're on the straight and narrow um, when you when you got involved with the show I have heard and I don't know if this is true that Jason Bateman has done so much to keep the level of the show where it's at and that he's obviously directed a lot of these episodes and yet I'm so always surprised that while the show does revolve around him, all the other peripheral characters, specifically the female characters, and like the relationship you had with his character on the show, has been amazing to watch. Mm -hmm. And what's it like working with him? And does he set the tone? And 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 how does all that work? And how does how, I, I mean, talk a little bit about that, I guess. Yeah, I you know, it's um, before I even got on set, I was talking to a friend and they were just like, it's one of the best places to work. And I was just like, oh, that's so cool. That's good to know. And, and they were just like, it starts at the top, though. You know, you can tell when you walk on set that Jason creates an atmosphere for people to, um, you know, just enjoy their day at work. You know what I mean? Right. And it's every single person loves to be there. And, you know, they're cracking jokes every five seconds. And you wouldn't think that, you know, judging by how, you know, serious the show is. But right. in, in every take, I was cracking up. And, um it was just a wonderful, wonderful place to work. And one of my first scenes was with Laura Lenny and she was just like, you know, we mess up all the time. We have fun. You know, this is what we do. And I was just like, I'm home. This is great. So <laughs> it, it really does start at the top. Um, and Jason is just so generous and he is such a, a think tank of amazing minds and everybody really works together. So it's really awesome to watch. Yeah, I mean, it, obviously, it, it really it, it shows in the in the performances and it shows in the show itself, and it's I think it's interesting that an actor does wield that kind of power who's also directing, and it's nice to see and to hear that because I think that's the way all working in the industry should be. Yeah, you know, it, it shouldn't be. Now, let me ask you this: for you, as far as your character is concerned, I have a like in my own mind, I do believe that all of the characters are being led down to hell like they literally like we don't know we don't know but this this show might all take place in purgatory we just haven't seen that yet because everybody gets drawn deeper and deeper into their own personal hells mm -hmm. and your character is primed like i don't think a fourth season's been announced has it not yet now 
I could see that your character is also going uh, straight to hell. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're in big trouble. You know, you're, you're, you're going to be, your soul is going to be corrupted. Um, she just tried to do a job, man. She just tried to do a job. Yeah, and, and sure. <laughs> everybody on there is trying to take care of what's theirs. You know, they're trying to take care of their family. They're trying to take care of their, you know, what they've done with their life. They're trying to take care of, you know, um, everything they're trying, they're thinking they're doing the right thing, you know? Um, but yeah, you just, it's a rabbit hole. Now, do you guys, do you have table reads? Do you, or do you just get the scripts? Do you have, is there any rehearsal time? You just get the scripts before you shoot? Yeah, we get the scripts. We don't do a table read, uh, but we, as soon as we get in there, we'll sit with whatever director uh, is working on that particular episode. Uh, maybe a writer's in the room, uh, and then, you know, a, a couple of crew members, and we rehearse it really quickly before we start the takes. Uh, but no table read. Just wow. right in the fire. So when you get a script, you, like, tear through it, like, ooh, I can't wait to see what happens yeah. next. Yeah, especially being such a huge fan of the show. Like, I was waiting just to, you know, because of, we were left with such a huge cliffhanger with season two. Right. That Scripts, I felt like I had this magical piece of candy that nobody else had. And I was just like, I get to know what happens next. And I just read it as a fan first, especially not being in the first two episodes. Um, I was really just able to ingest it and be like, here we go. Uh, right. And little bit by little bit, we get the rest of the season. And then we got seven, eight, nine, and 10 all together. And I think I was up in my bed till four o'clock in the morning, just like, <sighs> and I like jumped back in my bed. Like when I got to the end, it was just, I have the same reactions that you guys have reading the scripts. Oh, I mean, you talk about sticking the landing. I mean, season three, what a, what an end. Now, yeah. how long from a production standpoint, how long do you guys shoot? Do you shoot in order? Do you shoot all episodes in order? And how long is the production schedule? Uh, we shoot for about six months. And, wow. uh, block shooting so we do pretty much like two episodes at a time so we shot one and two together uh then we shot three and four together and within the two episodes things are kind of jumbled so my first scene shooting was like my final scene in episode four um right. with laura on the couch when i'm warning her and it was funny because i'm such a huge laura living fan i was like you give me laura on the first day <laughs> Um, could you could you explain to the audience what block shooting actually is so they know? So block shooting is uh, basically taking two episodes and shooting at the same time or or three or four, depending on how many you want to do. Um, and it really depends on, at least from my knowledge, uh, how the director wants to shoot, how the you know uh, producers want to shoot it. Uh, but we shot seven, eight, nine, and ten as one big block. And so, I mean, scenes are all over the place, you know, like one day you'll come in and you'll shoot majority of your scenes in episode seven and then one ep one scene in episode 10. Right. Uh, and then yes, like, you like stay and shoot something in episode six and, you know, it's just all over the place. But they'll, they'll shoot you all of your scenes, even though they might be in two or three episodes, like at once at one time, which is, which is... I mean, that was that's something really new in the streaming world because you're producing all of these at, at one time. Usually in television, the writers are are catching up every episode, right. whereas now when you have three or four scripts done, you can do that. Right. Now, do you shoot on location? Uh, we, we have a couple of different uh, places that we shoot at, but then everything that we do has a replica in the warehouse, so there's kind of like two different things. So the birdhouse, there's actually the birdhouse, which is, I remember when I pulled up and I was just like, oh my God, it's the birdhouse. Um, but then there's also a complete replica of the inside and a little bit of the outside in the warehouse, you know, um, things like that big old chapel scene uh, towards the end of season um, three. I watched it being built and it was just magical to, you know, see everything happen right there. Um, so yeah, there's duo locations. Right, yeah. right. Now, when when you guys are shooting, are are you like you said six months? Do you work for the entirety of that time, or do you come and go over the course of those six months? It depends. I mean, I'm you know Jason, Laura, uh, Julia. Uh, they're 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 there a lot. You know, um, right? So obviously, in those entire six months. But for somebody like me, um, I would have a good two weeks off at a time. Or I think there was once where I had a whole month off. Um, 
So because they try to like get you in there in pockets. Um, and then you have a wonderful time in Atlanta. <laughs> right. <laughs> now you, well, Lisa Emery, who's going to be here, and then you, you guys were both on Jessica Jones, right? Yeah. Did you know each other before? No, I didn't. You know, Grace was such a, um, she was kind of in the pocket of Trish's world only. Right. You know, so I didn't get a chance to really meet anybody else. I was lucky enough to meet um, Kristen Ritter because she directed one of the episodes, which was great. Um, but everybody I was with was in that Trish show world, and that's it. Right. And it's such a, I mean, we all just think actors, they all must know each other. But if you don't, if you don't share scenes with people, you might never meet them, except whether it's got a premiere or something or, right. you know, if that's a strain. But it's, you know, Lisa's character, too, in terms of what she was doing the third season, I was like, wow. I mean, that's some that's some pretty, uh, pretty edgy stuff. She's 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 having an affair with a much younger man. And she basically she wins in the end, too. Yeah. I mean, she has she has she has victory. So are you aware, you know, there's so much talk now with um oh hey somebody has a somebody has a question let me ask you uh joshua palace says ozark is a truly great darkly powerful series jessica francis dukes is excellent on it really enjoyed her work on jessica jones as well cheers jessica thank you <laughs> so, so i was gonna say i mean are you aware with all this talk about about having uh, more uh, roles for women in hollywood when you're on a show like this is it is it something that, that that I don't know that there's so many great roles for women. It's unique, I think, in terms of of television that isn't necessary. It's not necessarily a female centric show, but also the strongest characters are women, which is an amazing thing. Is that something you actresses talk about? Like these are great roles. Yeah, uh, you know the writers. I think uh, to commend a lot of them, there's a mixture of writers you know you see a lot of women in the writers room for ozark right. you see a lot of female directors for ozark um and it's just wonderful i mean half the crew is female you know it's just like it's epic to walk on somewhere and you see a girl with a gr you know with with some big old cable walking through and you're just like hell yeah you know <laughs> um, and so it's no wonder that these strong women and come out of this world. I think that the casting director, the producers, and all of the uh, people that are in charge of who they bring in, like they 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 bring in some firecrackers, and I just love to watch them work. You know, I would go on set even when I wasn't called to see like Julia or you know right. or Jan or Lisa or you know Laura work. And I remember when I first got there, meeting them as a as a you know actress in the world you look up to these women, you know, right. especially coming from the world of theater, you know, Janet McTeer and, and, and Laura Linney are, you know, theater goddesses. So I, I, it's it's just an absolute joy. And it's just, it influences and inspires and it fuels me to be working with those women. Yeah, yeah Janet McTeer, especially too. I mean, she also had a, another great, great, she had a great season this year. Yeah. yeah. Now, I, you know, I find it really interesting that, that Jason Bateman, you know, the traditional, I guess, star of the show is so generous and he's really created. I think it's fairly unique to see a lead perfectly content to allow his other actors to shine. And he doesn't seem to be he's completely fearless. And, and, and I think that really comes through in the show, just how how he's allowed the show to develop that way, because. Even people like Julia, like when I first saw her, I thought this must be some girl they found locally. Like there's, she seems so authentic. And then when you see her on a talk show or something, she's promoting her, her latest film. She's nothing. And that's what great actors do. She's nothing like she appears on that show. And I'm like, wow, they have done a great job casting this. Yeah, they and, really have. And, and he's, and, just, oh, he's wonderful. Ahead. He has a way of, um, I think he said it in an interview where he's like, I just try to be as invisible as possible. And wow. as an actor, you think the complete opposite. You're like, you know, I, I got to figure out how to make this moment interesting or do this or do that. And he was actually a huge lesson for me um, in how to just be it there and be in the moment and try to give as much as you can. And, and that's the gr great thing about other people on the show, too. Um, it, they are great scene partners. And that's just it's just an amazing place to be. Now, did you do any research uh uh, uh, into the FBI and and because you you're you're very authentic. I mean, you carry yourself like I totally believe 
that you went to the FBI Academy. Like maybe you were you were you went to school with Clarice Starling from Silence of the Lambs or something. Yes. Like like did you did is there a technical advisor on the show at all, or did you do any kind of research to play the role? No, yeah, I did uh, tons of research, and I think that um, coming from my theater background, where we have like a week of table work, and we have a dramaturg, and we have right. you know all those things in place for us to learn everything we need to know in such a compact short, uh, amount of time. But I had, you know, months before I started shooting after I knew I got the role. And so I studied everything. I studied forensic accounting. I studied what the training would be for the FBI. I wow. started working with the trainer. Like, even though my character's pregnant, I was just like, I'm going to work out. Just, you know what I mean? All these things. And, and um, it's wonderful to also have directors and writers that are there every five seconds to go, what, what, you, what question do you have? What do you need? You yeah. know, and um, the first director, Shireen, she sat down with me and she was just like, okay, here's what we know so far about Maya. Um, and then I was able to take that information and research even further. And then I also went through both season and watched just the FBI scenes to see what I would have in my little folder walking on the set. So there was a lot of research, yeah. Well, it definitely comes through in your performance. I mean, you do, you have a gravitas and an authenticity that I think is, uh, it really serves the show well. But I'm curious, I mean, obviously we're at, a, we're at the mainframe Comic-Con. Uh, were you a fan? Have you gone to fan events before? Have you gone to San Diego, the Comic-Con? And, and, and what is it like for you as a fan of a show to then find yourself on the show? That's like every fan's dream. Yeah, first of all, I'm a huge Comic-Con fan, but I've never been to one. Uh, so I'm like, this is just juicy to even be a part of this right now. I'm a huge comic book nerd. Um, so that's a, it's just a joyful place for me to be. Um, and uh, as far as being on a, a show that I love so much, at first it was just extremely nerve wracking because I was just right. like, I'm into something that is so whole and so complete. And it's just like, I got to get in there and figure out where I fit and um, I remember the first like month before I even got on set, I, I was just sweating bullets because you think like I just want to be the best I can be. I want I I, I know what those people could do, you know, um, <laughs> and I've seen the extent of what they could do. And and then I got on set and they were just like, hey, and I was like, oh, you guys are regular. Oh, this is awesome, you know. They're just regular people, um, and it felt like I was coming back to summer camp, you know. It was great. Well, how did you, you know, I, I didn't ask you this, but but did you always want to be an actress? And, and how did you sort of get into the profession? I've always wanted to be an actress. Um, I think there was one moment where I wanted to be a marine biologist after I saw Free Willy. And then I was like, okay, I'll just play one in a movie. <laughs> but um, but no, I've always wanted to do this. Uh, this is my passion. It's, it's There's nothing that I love more than art and how we get a chance to influence the world. So um, I was in a drama club when I was in middle school and high school and it turned into a team performing arts troupe. So I was constantly in a performance mode and then went to co uh, college and majored in it, then went to grad school and got my master's in it. And oh, then wow. worked to stop and I was teaching acting at Howard University and Montgomery College, and, you know, and just continuously just absorbing, absorbing, absorbing. And then about five years ago, a show that I originated in DC where I'm from uh, moved to New York and went to Off-Broadway and I was just like, okay, I'm gonna audition for it. And here we are five years later. Wow, so you really are a lifer. I mean, you really have the, the, the true theater background. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting, John Noble, obviously, who I was interviewing before, uh, was also, you know, came out of the theater and was in the theater for a long time before he transitioned over to film and television work. Yeah. Would you recommend to any aspiring actors to concentrate, I mean, I know a lot of people want to go right into television and, and film, but I, I would think that having a theater background is invaluable for for acting. And would you recommend a theater background for anybody, any aspiring young actors to really concentrate on that first? Well, I think it depends on you. I think it depends on the type of artist you are. You know, I know a lot of people that started out as musicians and then right. all of a sudden went to TV or, you know, uh, different things like that. I think the, the main thing is finding your passion um, because theater is a, it, it is a, it's an unforgiving beast and you've got to love it in order to do it, you know, uh, because it's not, 
you know, the paychecks aren't going to be as big until you get to, you know, the big theaters off Broadway or Broadway or even some of the regional theaters around the country. Um, so it is, like you said, it's a lifer situation. You have to be addicted to it. Right. Um, yeah. But I think that it really depends on you. I think in order to train as far as an actor is concerned, not necessarily just connecting to TV, um, the best place in the whole wide world is to learn in a theater. Um, so I, I would always say, follow your passion, whatever that is first. Um, but the training can come from anywhere and anybody, I think. Now, when you transitioned out of theater and into television and, and film, what were some of the things that surprised you? I mean, you always hear that when you're on stage, you have to be bigger because you're playing to a, a theater full of people, hopefully a big theater full of people. But then with with the camera, when the camera gets in so close, you have to kind of bring it down. Was was yeah. that a, a transition you had to learn or was that not difficult to do? I, I think we're running out of time, but I, that might be a long question. But I was just curious because with that theater background that you had, was it difficult to make the transition to acting in front of a camera? It, it wasn't difficult, but it was a lot of work. Uh, it took a lot of, you know, I took a whole bunch of classes because I had already had my theater training um, and had performed on stages everywhere. Um, but then, sorry, my camera went out so I can't see you. Um, oh. But then when it came to time to audition for TV and film, I, I had to learn a whole different idea of what the craft meant. And it went from wow. learning how to take over a room to angles and pictures and moments and you know truth, the truth became even um, even more of a, a goal. Yeah, right. Because it was, it's so it was different. A difficult transition. Yeah. You know, you'll be on stage for two hours playing a part, but on film you might have to pick up one line. Can you just say this and right. one angle, and and you then have to get back into that space, the same space you might have been playing a scene with your partner or Laura Linney or something, and you have to get the same emotion, but for one head turn, which yeah, is yeah. a difficult- It's, a, it's, it's a, just two completely different machines. I really believe that. Well, do you know if you're gonna get a fourth season as a fourth? Cause I know that Netflix is not always forthcoming about when it's like they'll green light a show and then you realize, oh, they already shot it. They just don't tell you. Do right. you have any Do you have any insight into when we might see the fourth season of I Ozark? Don't know. I don't know. I hope hope so. I hope so. I'll be right there with you guys with my fingers crossed. So. <laughs> well, uh, it, it's it's just been it's been great to talk to you about this, and I I think that um, you know the show is the show is it, it's just fantastic. And for anybody who hasn't seen Ozark, I cannot stress enough. I mean, if you're fans of of crime thrillers and family dramas, and this show is one of the best on TV, and uh, it's uh, Jessica Francis Dukes. You. You were a great addition to this show. So not thank you. Not only, I'm sorry to interrupt you, Rob. No, not only do I want to thank you, Jessica, and you, Robert, for being here. I wanted to say that uh, Lisa had an emergency and couldn't uh, log on. So she gives her, no, 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 nothing, nothing tragic, but uh, just something she had to take care of. So she was no able worries. to join us, but she extends her, uh, her thanks for, for having mainframe on. Uh, so she'll be on next time. We will have Lisa Yay. on. Yay. Everybody right. needs Thanks to watch Ozark if you haven't. 